Hey, hey, everyone. Welcome back to Pro Football Tonight. We're going to be talking about all the playoff games for this Super Wild Card Weekend with special contributor, former host, and still part-time something, Johnny G. Johnny, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. It's good to be part-time something. We'll have to figure out what that something is. Yeah, I mean, it's up to you to figure out because we've been trying for a few years, and at this point, I fully give up. One thing that Johnny G does do, though, he writes a weekly column for us over at realtakesports.com with our NBA power rankings, and he's got some spicy takes, people. Uh, uh, no surprise, a New York team is at the top. However, it's not the New York Knicks, thank God. Um, yeah, we're still waiting on this week, so I wonder where it went. Yeah, that it went on my to-do list of things that I still haven't done, but it'll be up by the time people watch this episode. Guys, we have so much to talk about. Brock Purdy making his playoff debut. Geno Smith making his playoff debut. Tua Tagovailoa making his playoff debut. So many young quarterbacks in this playoff field. I believe I was reading a stat, Johnny, of the oldest quarterback out of the AFC is Patrick Mahomes at the age of 27. That is unbelievable. Nuts. nuts. And then you look at the NFC, it's like geezers like Tom Brady, who's 45. Kirk Cousins, who's coming up to 33. Uh, uh, Daniel Jones, your boy, Daniel Jones. Danny Dimes is, is sitting there pretty at like 26. But, man, the, 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 the youth, the youthful exuberance in the AFC is, is just insane. And maybe that's how they got this far. But... Uh, what do you think about that, though? Just seeing so many young quarterbacks lead their team to the playoff like this. First and foremost, I think it's unbelievably great for the league to have a new generation of quarterbacks who can lead teams into a, into a new era of football, to bring in a new generation of fans, young kids growing up who want to be Patrick Mahomes. I mean, growing up, we wanted to be Tom Brady. We wanted to be Peyton Manning. And obviously, I wanted to be Eli. You wanted to be Joe Flacco, I guess. Probably you know, not. I, but You know, I wanted to be Joe Flacco in 2012. That was it. That was it. That was that when was he it. was elite. Was but point, point being is we grew up on a different generation of quarterbacks. And we've kind of been in a, a transition period, you would say. And now we're starting to see this crop of young quarterbacks of teams that were watching get into the playoffs, not one off, but two, three, four years in a row. Teams that we can count on as being playoff locks, even if they're not going to win every year. That would be a team like Mahomes being the oldest one left in the in the field in the AFC. So it's it's great for the league. Absolutely agree. And one young quarterback that we're going to see make his playoff debut is Mr. Irrelevant Brock Purdy. He's going to be taking on the Seattle Seahawks and resurgent, a career resurgent, Geno Smith, who, look, I know Russ is going to get a lot of flack for this, for, for all of this, right? The fact that Geno Smith was able to lead this team to the playoffs and he wasn't last year, and the fact that he just completely fizzled out. And I understand that there's a time for that, but we got to give our flowers. We got to give Geno Smith his flowers here. Right, Johnny? I mean, this is just obviously it's a team sport, but he's play, he's played at an exceptionally high level. 30 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, completing above 65 percent of his passes. This dude has played lights out. And I don't think we talk about it as much as we should. Like he's not, I think, in the MVP conversation, but he's definitely, if you ask me, in the comeback player of the year conversation and in that. He came back basically out of being a lifelong backup to what many contribute to be a good starter now. Yeah, I uh, we might have to take a page out of the NBA's book instead of comeback player. Most most improved. So can you come back? If you're backup, a guy who I never heard of him before that before he started making starts when Jimmy G went down. At the end of the day. It has been unbelievable what Brock Purdy has done. It goes to show that you can succeed in this league if you have the intangibles, if you have the willpower, if you have the willingness to go in every day and do what's asked of you. Obviously, it helps that Kyle Shanahan is an offensive genius. It helps that he has a great team around him. But you you laid out the numbers, 30 touchdowns, 11 interceptions, that's nothing to sneeze at. Those are excellent numbers for, I don't know, how many starts did he make? Something around 12? 
Those uh, are Gino, excellent. Gino, no, Geno Smith? No, uh, uh, oh, Brock, Brock Purdy. Purdy. Well, no, Brock Purdy had like t- 10 touchdowns and four interceptions. I was talking about Geno Smith. I see. Okay. Okay. Player of the year. And what? We'll, we'll back up. We'll back up there. Yeah, yeah. Geno Smith, it's very interesting to watch Geno Smith as a, as a Giants fan, you know, as a New Yorker, watching him with the Jets when he first came up, when he first got drafted in the second round. I mean, I, I remember when. He got nailed in the jaw by I.K. and Kampali. I remember when they cut him and then Rex Ryan made him a captain for their game against the Jets like six weeks later. It's it's unbelievable to me to see Geno Smith make it to the playoffs with the Seahawks. We all thought the Packers were going to make it anyway and occupy this spot. So it's kind of shocking to see the Seahawks here. But they, they've been a solid team, much like the Giants. They've exceeded expectations just by playing solid football. You know, they're not spectacular at any one thing, but Gino gets the job done. Gino makes plays. He doesn't lose football games. He makes smart decisions. And you mentioned Russell West, Russell, Russell Westbrook. Russell you Westbrook. mentioned Russell Wilson. That, that You can't say that about him right now. Yeah, you can't. I mean, you want to talk about Russell Westbrook and players who just make terrible decisions on a field, on the court. It's it's shocking to see the regression of Russell Wilson's decision making for the for the Denver Broncos, and you can attribute whatever you want to to that, that offense, Nathaniel Hackett, and the miscommunication. But at the end of the day, the Broncos were horrendous because Russell Wilson was bad, and the Seahawks have been good because Geno Smith got the job done. So they, they get to the playoffs, and it's going to be a good game. This should this should be an exciting matchup between these two teams. Yep, it should be an exciting matchup. I think there's going to be a big emphasis on defense. That being said, I also think that this is going to be a 10-point minimum loss for the Seattle Seahawks. I love I love Geno Smith's story. I love the fact that this team, everyone had them pegged to be the, the worst team in the league. Everyone's like, oh, they're going to get the number one pick. They're going to pick C.J. Stroud. They're going to get a quarterback in the draft. That is not the case anymore, although they have the Broncos pick, so it still could be the case, which is crazy because the Broncos went like 3-15. and 15. But regardless, right now, there is no better team, in my opinion, in the entire National Football League than the San Francisco 49ers. Like, we don't talk yeah. about them as much as we should because everyone's focused on the overall record of like, oh, the Eagles are are 14 and three or the Chiefs and Patrick Mahomes doing great. They're also, I believe, like 13 and four. But this is a 49ers team that has is on its third quarterback on its third quarterback, Johnny, and has won 10 in a row going into the playoffs. They, and they have been playing scarily good, like. Kyle Shanahan, you're right, is an offensive genius, but the culture that they've built, it is a winning culture, and it's like a championship winning culture because they're a team that they're already good to start the season, right? But as time goes on, and whenever they go on these runs, whether it was last year, whether it was the the year they went to the Super Bowl, they get better and better and better as the weeks go by. And I am sensing a long run for them into this playoff, into these playoffs. I'm going to go with the San Francisco 49ers here. I'll say by 10. I'm not going to give you a score, but definitely by 10. I think they're just too good. I think Brock Purdy is just playing too well, and they have too many weapons. Like, they added Christian McCaffrey, and everyone after the first week was like, ah, you know, he's not, he's not really doing it. The fantasy stats aren't well, going well. And then he just, he's fit right in. Like, everything's working for this football team. Yeah, as long as they're healthy, he doesn't need fantasy stats, and that's the beauty of it. He's an, a player with an undersized role, and if he gives you those fantasy stats that he's put up for most of his career, they're going to be unstoppable in the NFC playoff. I agree with you. I'm going to take San Francisco behind Brock Purdy, Christian McCaffrey, and a healthy offense with a solid defense behind them. They're going to win 10 or more. It'll be a double-digit game, 49ers advance. Yeah, I mean, it is, and and this is no hate on the Seahawks. Like, the fact that they are here is genuinely, and I don't mean that as a condescending way, it is genuinely an accomplishment because everyone, including myself, thought they were going to be absolute hot garbage to begin the year, and they weren't. And oh, they, yeah. They, they started we were talking seven. about them with the Giants up uh, as the teams that we thought would, would be up in top five looking for a new quarterback. Yeah. But for neither team, that, that didn't happen for them. 
Shows how little we know. Um, Moving on, uh, the Los Angeles Chargers are going to be going out to play the Jacksonville Jaguars. Trevor Lawrence and Justin Herbert making, um, I believe, yeah, their playoff debuts because I don't think Justin Herbert's been in the playoffs. This is his first playoff stint. He's up against a guy and, and a, a Jaguars team, I should say, that clinched against the hot garbage Tennessee Titans last week. Um, interesting note going into this game, Johnny. Trevor Lawrence, in his career in high school and college and the pros now, has never lost a game on a Saturday. This game happens to take place on a Saturday night in Duval County. What do you see? What's the storylines going into this game? What do you see happening? Well, I think the Jaguars are probably the surprise of the AFC. You know, not a team that we thought would be making the playoffs. Another team that we thought maybe more middling than horrendous. But I, I think we all thought that the Titans were going to make that spot where the Colts were attempting to at the very least. But mm-hmm. they flamed out behind who the hell knows what's going on in Indianapolis right now. I heard they just uh, interviewed Eric Bieniemy. But either way, Step in the, right the Jaguars to me are... <laughs> you know, any direction other than Jeff Saturday is the right direction for that franchise. But regardless, the Jaguars, I think, are the surprise of the AFC. We'll see how Trevor Lawrence handles his first NFL playoff game. We've seen a lot of those kind of streaks you mentioned, ever losing on a Saturday, get broken in the NFL mm-hmm. for Trevor Lawrence. It's just, you know, it's a whole new game. It's a whole new stratosphere that he's going to have to step into here, something that he's never experienced even having gone to, to national championships. So we'll see how he handles it. But on the other side, you're not talking about an experienced quarterback, an experienced football team, a young head coach, Brandon Staley, a young quarterback in Justin Herbert. So it's going to be interesting to see how the Chargers react to the playoff environment as well. Two young teams, the Chargers, even though they're the better of the two teams, are on the road. Jacksonville can be loud, you know, it can get rowdy there. It's not hey, going to be a quiet that atmosphere. Thursday, that, that Saturday night game against the Titans, that was like one of the, that was one of the craziest atmospheres I think we've seen all season. Like they were. Yeah. Loud. It's crazy. They can get loud in that stadium over there in Jacksonville. I live here in Florida. I, I don't want to go anywhere near Jacksonville. They, <laughs> so they, they, it's going to be an interesting challenge for the chargers. I, I would look at this game as a potential upset pick. Uh, you know, one upset winner wins every year that we're just kind of shocked about. I would not be surprised if that's Trevor Lawrence and the Jaguars in this matchup. That's interesting that you even say that. Um, you know why it's interesting? Because this is why? my upset pick. I know a lot of people are like, oh, Trevor <laughs> Lawrence is going to win. And he's going to, he, they're going to crown him. He's going to be great. Or, or sorry, uh, Justin Herbert's going to win. And he's going to, he's going to be up there with the Patrick Mahomes, the Josh Allens, the Lamar Jacksons, all those guys. Don't, it, this guy, the, this head coach has won a Super Bowl. And people forget he won that Super Bowl just a short time ago. It was only five years ago Doug Peterson and the Eagles won that Super Bowl. My oh my, things have changed. But you're looking at a guy who's won a Super Bowl, a guy in Trevor Lawrence who is playing the best football of his NFL career. Like another guy who over the past few weeks has just gotten better. This Jacksonville team started off, I believe, like three and seven. They've now rattled off. Um, I think they, they won like something crazy, like eight of their or not eight. It was like six of their last nine or, or something like that. I don't know. They're great. They're a great football team right now. And they're going to be a great football team come Saturday. They're going to get the victory here. They're not going to be a great football team come the divisional round because they're going to get their asses kicked. But I think Duval County, they're going to do it for Duval County. They're going to get this playoff win. And it's going to start the conversation of, Trevor Lawrence, everyone thought that first year, well, maybe he's maybe he's not the golden boy everyone thought he was. Maybe he is. And I and I'm gonna be right there telling everybody I told you so when it happens. A little bit of favoritism from me. I don't really care. I also think that that defense is great. Like that defense is so good. They're gonna give Justin Herbert fits. Doesn't help that Justin Justin Herbert's best target in Mike Williams is injured because Brandon Staley said, I'm going to start my starters in a game that has zero playoff implications at all for me. So give me the Jaguars there on that front. What about you, Johnny? Yeah, so it's it's very interesting. I think uh, 
Again, on Lawrence, you mentioned that everyone wanted to give up on him after the first year. They didn't think it would happen. You look at this AFC playoff picture, and it shows you you can't give up on quarterbacks after the first year. Mahomes is the one guy that was was a superstar from day one, and even he took a year off behind Alex Smith. Josh Josh Allen wasn't someone who people identified right away as someone who was going to be successful. Uh, Justin Herbert wasn't even fantastic in his first few starts. He was good, but I, he's reached an ascendancy. I think that people attribute still more what's to come to him than what he is currently. I think there's still a lot of projection in his in in consensus analysis mm-hmm. when we talk about Justin Herbert. That's not to say he's bad, but I think people put the cart before the horse. Hit, but the, ah, pardon me, people put the cart before the horse on him. And we, if we take a step back and just what have the Chargers accomplished to this point? Nothing. So how can we put Justin Herbert in that conversation with guys like Patrick Mahomes? I don't think we can yet. Now, that being said, this is the opportunity for them to do that. This is the opportunity for them to make a big playoff run. Everyone's picking the Bengals, the Bills, the Chiefs to go far. I, I would even venture that the Dolphins are a team that people would put above the Chargers in the AFC. You know, the only teams that I think would really stay below them are the the Ravens. I'm sorry, no Lamar Jackson. You know, if Lamar was there, it's a little bit of a different story. But the Ravens and the and the Jags are probably the only teams that would be right there with the Chargers. So this is an opportunity for them to really make a long run in the playoffs and show people that they are that team. Brandon Staley's on the hot seat, so it's time to it's time to make something happen. I don't think he's as on the hot seat as people think he is. Like this is a guy who who was one like, like he, he's he's won enough, I think, to keep his job. Y- yes, the going forward on fourth down thing is like, I like it because I'm perplexing. No, no, I like it because it's entertaining. I, as a football fan, I'm all for it. I know there are a lot of here's the thing. There's a lot of serious quote unquote football fans out there who are just like, oh, this is bad for the integrity of the game and the blah blah blah. blah. I'm just like. Bro, gut feel, gut feel. My team's better than yours. Let's go for it. I respect that on some level. It, no yeah, matter it how, del- no matter how delusional it may be at times, it I takes respect- balls. You know, and that's the kind of stuff that you have to do in the playoffs. You have to manage by your gut. You throw the stats out the window. I don't care what happened in the playoffs when it's you know February second and it's five degrees outside and it's. Snow everywhere, just harsh winds. You got to decide in that moment, is my guy able to go? Can we make this play? How have things looked today? If he's willing to manage by his gut, that's a type of coach that can be successful in the playoffs. Exactly. You know the other type of coach that can be successful in the playoffs? Dude. The the Miami Dolphins found a winner in Mike McDaniel, didn't they? Like, I remember in the... Johnny, you remember that clip that was going around in the offseason where it was like uh, they were doing like a Shag Mary Kill uh, between like Mike Mc... They asked him like, Shag Mary Kill, all your head coaches. It was like... Or all your like former head coaches. It was so it was like Kyle Shanahan, um, uh, uh, Sean McVay, and then like one other guy. Uh, um, uh, the guy up in Green Bay. Uh, uh, LaFleur. So he was like, Shag Mary Kill... All- all your head coaches and Mike McDaniel just sat there and like genuinely thought about it. I was like, oh, okay, so you know, I'd 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 probably I'd probably kiss Mike, <laughs> like and, you know, and then he was like, I I'd 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 marry Kyle because he's very caring, you know, like, like I feel like he'd very care about me, like, and I was like, this man, like at that point, I was like, this man is going either like seventeen and zero or zero and seventeen. There's no middle ground. Yet here we are, and like he's like right there at five hundred. But I was yeah. like, this this guy's something. Like, like he's I I love I love Mike McDaniel. I think he's a great coach and I think he's a great human being. Um that being said, he is going to be without his starting quarterback in Tua Tagga by Law. He's also gonna be without his backup quarterback in Teddy Bridgewater. Skylar Thompson gets to start for the Miami Dolphins. These two split the season series. Uh, between the Bills and the Dolphins, they split the season series, but without two attack by low, it's going to be an uphill battle, to say the least, for this Miami Dolphin football team, especially against a Bills team that you would think is playing inspired football right now. Yeah, the Dolphins have been quite the roller coaster all year long, with Tua out for multiple concussions, losing Teddy Bridgewater as well. 
Skylar Thompson has filled in admirably, but they struggled down the stretch of this year. This is not a team coming in in a hot stretch. They really have been scuffling. The Bills haven't been fantastic either, so there is an opening there. But I, I think if we're looking at this realistically, the Bills will probably come here ready to play. They will come and steamroll the Dolphins. You know, that's not even getting into Tamar Hamlin. Of course, our prayers go out to him and his family. We hope for a speedy recovery. We hope that Demar can come back, play football, to do what he loves again. And if not, that he finds happiness and passion in something else in life. But they're, they're coming in with the narrative. They're coming in with the clear talent advantage. They're coming in with the inspiration. And they're just the better team, flat out. Even, even with everybody healthy, the Bills are the better team. So, you know, similar to, to what we said about the Chargers, that it's their time to show they are a team to beat. They are someone to cement their legacy. We talk about the Bills, like they're the best team in the AFC. Well, be the best team in the AFC. Let me see you in the Super Bowl. This should not be a game that's an impediment for them. This should be a game that they can try things, they can steamroll the Dolphins, gain some confidence, and move into the division round expecting to really make some noise. Yeah, I mean, the other thing that you didn't even mention there is the fact that they're playing in Buffalo at Ralph Wilson Stadium yeah. in that environment. Bills Mafia is going to be loud. They're going to be so loud for that game. It's We got a temperature check on that? But I, what is, I, what is it going to look like for the Dolphins? Freezing is what it's going to look like for the Dolphins. I don't even need to check the temperature. Freezing, my good sir. Yeah, the fish will be squished. Uh, yep, they will be indeed. Um, Johnny, for uh, for this next game, I want you to take your analyst hat off and go full <laughs> throttle as a New York okay. Giants fan because your Giants <laughs> are in the playoffs. Congratulations, Johnny Woo! G. How many? Oh, oh, that's the wrong side, Joe. Anyway, how many years have you waited to hear those words? The New York football giants have made the playoffs. Oh the first time since 2016? Yes, sir. Since the boat pick. Oh, God. <laughs> how far have you come? I know. Odell Beckham's a free agent. We're watching videos of him getting kicked off of planes now. <laughs> oh, oh, but. God. The Gi- it's unbelievable. It's Honestly, it's shocking because we talked before the season started that we thought the Jets and the Giants would maybe win nine games combined. The Giants come in win a shocking amount of games this season. They're not great at anything in particular, right? But they got great performances when they needed them. You know, this Brian Dabble brought that next man up mentality to this team. He got contributions from every spot on that 53-man roster. He got everyone bought in, organized, playing hard, quality football for every second of the football game. And that's what these Giants are all about. They play they play football the right way. They play football with organization, and they play together. So they can overcome Daniel Jones not being a top-five quarterback. They can overcome injuries to Saquon Barkley, and a receiver core where you could have 15 guesses and you still wouldn't get one right. I, you, they can overcome those things because this Giants team works hard and they fight. You know, On the other side, the Vikings are an interesting team. The Giants and Vikings played each other. The Giants had a lead and the, the Vikings kicked, uh, I think, what was it, 61, 62, It was a 61-yard yard field goal. It, was, it set their, their franchise record for the longest in, mm-hmm. in Vikings history. To win that game, I didn't think he was going to get it. And and it just, he got it. You know, good for him. But the Giants had control of that game late. The Giants' defense bent, uh, as is their tradition. You know, I think they're 20th in, in defense in the NFL this season. So they're nothing nothing spectacular. But they're a bend but don't break defense. They will they will give up yards in that instance. A few too many. But these this will be a competitive game. I don't think the Vikings are... are they won a lot of games, but I, I really don't think that they're all that. I, I think that they're a team that can be exposed. Thank you. Thank you. All you Vikings fans that are out there right now and you can hear the sound of my voice, accept the fact that you overpaid <laughs> for a fine quarterback. He's, He's just fine. fine. He's fine. Let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. After all the discussions that we've had on this show, 
Mm. Would you rather have Daniel Jones or Kirk Cousins? Daniel Jones, because they'd probably have to pay him less. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'd probably have to pay him less. Like, honestly. Yeah, I mean, uh, what what are we looking at for DJ? 500, 520, maybe? If Kirk Cousins get... is making, what, 180? Something ridiculous? He, he's ma- well, No, Kirk Cousins' is whole thing is he's making fully guaranteed money. He's at three straight fully guaranteed contracts. I think he's, like, made something towards $600 million in his career. Which, get your bag, Kirk. Get your bag. But, like, what are you doing? And his agent. Um, anyway, but but it... In all in all seriousness, I am picking the New York football giants here, and it is to do with two things. Number one, I think that Brian Dayball has motivated this, this team more so than anyone I think ever could to perform at their highest potential. And, and outstanding. And out like outstanding. They're playing like just great football. And the other thing is, I don't trust the Vikings in the playoffs. I don't care if they're at home. I don't care what. I don't trust this team. Jefferson's going to get his. But at the end of the day, Cousins is going to make that one play where you're just like, that's why he's not the guy, you know? Because in that moment, you kind of need the guy to step up. And, and that's just what I think. And, like, this Giants team, they're not, they're not ranked as a good defense. You're 100% right. But... Hayvon Thibodeau is a frustrating player for, for yes. an offensive line to go against, an offensive coordinator to go against. And the Giants, the Giants defense has this way of, you know, kind of like they bend, like kind of bend, but don't break, right? A lot of bending happens. They get bent a lot, but they, they, they get bent around. over sometimes. They stick around. They stick around, though. They do stick around they though, do. in those games. And I just, there's something in the air, man. I like, again, football, it's, it, we look at the analytical side of things, but we also look at the we also look at the gut feeling. And sometimes football is a gut feeling thing. I could yes. very well be wrong here. I'm probably gonna be wrong, but at the same time, what I see happening on Sunday is New York shows up in Minnesota, and just Minnesota's not ready. I just don't think they're gonna be ready. Like this is this is an untested, a largely untested roster. Uh, in the playoffs, like Kirk Cousins has that one playoff win over the Saints. Good for you, bully for you. But like, there's no one left from that 2000. There's basically no one left from that 2017 run to the NFC title game they had. And I just don't think the experience is there. You could say the same thing about the Giants, but at the same time, big old Brian Dayball over there. He's got like, how many titles does he have? He's like won like an insane amount of like Super Bowl championships. Just yep. like because he was like on uh, the Patriots roster and he was on like a few other rosters. I'm like, this dude is just like, like pedigree. He's a winner. He's a winner. Everywhere he goes, they win. You know, he knows how to win. He, he's he been with championship coaches. He's brought that winning culture to the Giants. That's what's in the air. You said something's in the air. That's what's in the air. Just a franchise that doesn't feel rudderless anymore. For so many years, this Giants team was lost in, in the wilderness, you know, just that they're playing crash somewhere in Canada, and who the hell knows where they are, but they're wandering out there. And finally, with Schoen and Dabble, we're looking at a team that has direction, that has order, that has confidence. Even, even if you could say, all right, Gettleman has ideas, Gettleman has a plan, I would sit there and say, okay, well, your plan is horseshit. It's a terrible plan. I don't know what to stop it. Stop it, please. And so there's a plan now. There's organization now. There is structure now. You know, we've lost Xavier McKinney, Addery Jackson for periods of time. Some of our best players. Again, I couldn't even name the receiving core. Richie James is our best receiver. Isaiah Hodgins. Uh, Freaking Darius Slayton is returned from the dead. You and I were talking about this offline once. And you, you, like, you were like, is there anyone in the NFL who has a worse receiving core than the New York Giants? <laughs> Just who? I Like, who the hell are these people? But the Giants make it work. Daniel Jones with the most receiving yards in his whole career this season. The Giants make it work. DJ makes smart decisions. He cut down on interceptions, on fumbles. He makes the right play. And now, you know, when the plays are not there, the guys aren't downfield. DJ has a great arm downfield. Very accurate. Yes. But the guy, his guys don't always go open. So when those plays aren't there, now finally Saquon is back and healthy to be that necessary release valve. And that opens up the Giants' offense. 
because the safeties will play back, you know, let the receivers stay underneath and then come up to the point of the ball as DJ's throwing it to keep the Giants receivers from making big plays. But what Saquon does is being able to be so explosive out of the backfield with receptions is that he forces the linebackers and the safeties to move up. He forces you to crowd the box. And then when you crowd the box, he goes to the outside. Then you have to spread. He can pound you right up the middle. So the return of Saquon Barkley being an excellent, excellent running back really opens up this Giants offense. They're not, I mean, I think what, they're 13th or something? They're not spectacular. They're not, like I said, they're not spectacular in one thing. But they can move the chains. They get the job done. I, my only real concern is that, and it's been a concern for a long time, especially with the lack of quality receiving core pieces, I'm concerned about their production in the red zone. I'm concerned they're going to struggle to punch it in if Saquon is stopped. Because you're going all out on Saquon at that point. So can DJ get it in himself? He, he brought, uh, What do you have, 11 or 10 rushing touchdowns this season? Something ridiculous? So that, that'll be the question for me in this game, is can the Giants get past the Vikings front into the end zone? Touchdowns, not field goals. Yeah, I mean it, it's gonna be it's gonna be interesting if if they play like they did in Green Bay though, zero shot in hell. I remember that game. That was an ugly football game for them. Ugly. Oh yeah, they didn't bring it. OBJ was dropping. He was dropping John, passes Justin in the Jefferson. end zone. What? Justin Jefferson. Oh, you talking about? I thought you were referencing the Giants game, the 2016. No, 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 not not. Why would I go back to the Giants' terrible luck playoff loss in 26? That was the, the highlight of Ben. That's my favorite career. reference because unlike the Vikings, the Giants, the Giants don't go to the playoffs. <laughs> that is true. That is well, the Vikings have not really made a habit of it. <laughs> really, I mean, they made a habit of going, and they made a habit. No, of they made a habit of losses. like going every two years. That's kind of what they've been doing. They've been like, oh, I'll take years. every two years. They, they're on an on cycle right now. Um. All um, right, all right. Anyway. anyway, I'm picking the Giants in this one as well. I'm thinking they're going to move on to the second round, and let's see my big blue get their first W in a long time in the postseason. Cool, cool, cool. Sunday night, 8.15 p.m. Johnny, I'm going to let you uh, just handle the lead on this one. <laughs> Sunday night at 8.15 p.m., the Cincinnati Bengals will host the Baltimore Ravens. Missing Lamar Jackson. The Ravens have struggled the last few weeks coming into the playoffs. They are hopeful that they can overcome the loss of their star QB. But, Omer, does not look good. Does not look good. The Bengals are rolling right now. Burrow has been outstanding this season. We are looking at one of the best offenses and one of the best defenses in the AFC. Simply put, this Bengals team is fantastic. It's going to be an uphill battle. Do you think the Ravens stand a chance? I don't know what you want me to say, Johnny. Um, but Let me hear. You wanted me to put my fan head on? No, it's your turn. Okay, so here's how we win. On Sunday, we get someone. To run over Joe Burrow with a car. No, I'm just kidding. Um, no, no, no. Don't do oh, that. Man. Don't do that. Don't do that. No. We don't advocate um, violence in this podcast unless it's on the football field and it's legal. Yes. Um, what he said. No, um, but in all seriousness. Yeah, uh, no Lamar Jackson this week. Uh, Lamar actually tweeted out um, on that he that he he basically said that, you know, his recovery isn't going as well as he wanted. People forget. Uh, I just want to address the Lamar point and then we'll move on to the game real quick because it's something that has been annoying me all year. I made a video about it. It's actually one of the most viewed videos I've ever made. Uh, and it's just the media hysteria that that has been, you know, just over the airwaves over the past couple of months of Lamar Jackson's contract. And he, he doesn't want to finish out the season and blah, 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 blah. It's like these people don't actually want to talk about football. They'd rather just make up their own narratives and storylines or whatever based in not based not on reality because the guy who, okay, 
the guy who everyone gets this from is a guy in the Baltimore Sun whose name I will not use because I don't want to give him even the the smallest sliver of attention because he's not freaking worth it. Odds are you haven't heard his name, but you've heard of the reports. Like, according to someone in the Baltimore Sun, Lamar Jackson doesn't want to be a Raven anymore. Lamar Jackson wants to sit out. This dude has been proven wrong at every turn. He's not a legitimate journalist. He's a shit stirrer. Okay, so that's addressed. Also, some got Ravens fans. We forget that sometimes when players have injuries, things don't go right in rehab. What he's dealing with is swelling. That's a sign that, hey, his rehab has not been going well. So, like, we are used to. We're so accustomed to, like, someone tears their ACL. Ah, oh, well, they're going to be ready for the start of next year. That's not always the case. People forget that these are serious injuries that these people are dealing with. Things that would take people like you and me, Johnny, years to recover from, right? Years yes. to really recover from. And and while they are expected to be back fully ready, healthy in just under, sometimes under a few weeks, as in Lamar Jackson's case. Now, so, like, I want to stop the hysteria, guys. It's okay. Like, we're going to, the Ravens are going to franchise Lamar Jackson. He's not going anywhere. It's not happening. It's a pipe dream. The media is lying to you. Now, secondly, this game. Look, there, there's not a lot I can say here that's going to that's gonna help us. All I will say, though, is we went to Cincinnati last week with the Bengals playing all of their starters, with us resting m basically our entire offense, playing our third-string quarterback. And we hung around in that game, and it had nothing to do with our offense. Our offense was god-awful. But our defense, Roquan Smith, uh, Justin Matabike, Calais Campbell, and that secondary, even with, with some pieces missing, showed up. And again, it's not a, oh, one size fits all uh, type of scenario where, oh, they're going to automatically play well. But if they can somehow play at that same level, if our defense can play at that same level they did last week, because remember, the final score of that game was 27 to 16. Three of the Bengals. Uh, touchdowns. So 21 of their 27 points came off of interceptions that basically put the ball at either like the 30 yard line, the 20 yard line, something like that. So they were basically going to score no matter what. If we can not turn the ball over here and Tyler Huntley is a guy who if he can put up 17 points. I believe he can put up 17 points. If it's, if we can hold on to the ball, we have to play a perfect game on offense. We can hold on to the ball. If we can run the ball with J.K. Dobbins and exploit that sometimes suspect uh, run defense of the Cincinnati Bengals, there's a chance here. Uh, as far as who wins, I don't know what y'all expected. I'm picking the Ravens. It's what I do. Ravens win the Super Bowl every year until we don't. So uh, that's who I got. Baltimore Ravens. I have to ride. I have to ride or die with them. Three point by three points. Justin Tucker field goal from 68 yards to win. Boom. All right. Well, you're absolutely right. If there is a chance and, you know, what's the old adage, any given Sunday, it's going to be that way. They have to force turnovers on, on defense and they can't turn the ball over themselves on offense. Tyler Huntley is a fine backup quarterback. He's a fine game manager. He just has to hold on to the football. No interceptions, no fumbles, no putting the Bengals on their side of the field. At the end of the day, you can't give that offense more. You have to keep them. On the other side of the field, give your defense a chance because you're absolutely right. That defense can make plays. That defense can stop the Bengals' offense. You have to give them a chance. What you said about Lamar is interesting. At the end of the day, he makes his money playing football, right? He's not making money sitting out. He's not making money making other th teams think that he's injury prone. You know, he's already a quarterback that relies on his legs. He's already a skinny guy. He's already a guy that has a reputation, right? That the reputation is not fair. He's an excellent elite quarterback, but he, you know, because of what's happened with guys like RG three, people think that though that archetype of quarterback is someone who is going to get hurt, and once they get hurt, that's it. That's their career, right? And I don't think that's what's going to happen with Lamar Jackson. So it makes no sense that he that he would be sitting out on purpose. If he could play, he would. He can't. So people need to let that go. It is, it is what it is. It's such as life. That's how the body works. We're not robots. This is not Madden. You know, there's no sim. He's not a computer. You know, that's not how people work. He will get back when his shoulder feels up to it. And you don't want to rush him back anyway, because that's how you get even more injured. And if you're Ravens fans, 
you would give up this one postseason to keep him healthy for the next five. So at the end of the day, I, I'm going to have to take the Bengals here uh, by a lot. I'm going to take the Bengals by more than 10. So they're going to roll here, and they'll move on to the divisional round. You want to you want to know an interesting tidbit about the Ravens this year? What of their seven losses, um, only one of them? Because I'm not count. Okay, I won't count Week 18 because that was like we get we 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 did not go into that game winning. But um, of of the six losses we had before Week 18, only one of them was by more than one touchdown. It's Stay a competitive in game. football team. A lot it's of those games have Lamar though. Yeah, but some of them didn't. Some of them didn't. That's look, look. It's just true. look, look. I'm, I'm just, look, I'm just saying, man. I'm just saying. You're telling me there's a chance. It's uh, a, they, they're at any given Sunday, man. Any it's given a Sunday. sliver. It's a small we've sliver. Seen where, we've seen crazier. That is true. That is true. I did witness Joe Flacco beat Peyton Manning, Tom Brady, and, and Andrew Luck in the playoffs in the same year. Still, we yeah. We I, talk witnessed, about I witnessed Eli before. beating Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady. I'm just saying, man, that was, yeah, Aaron, but uh, no one, okay, come on. Like, okay, I don't know. I don't want to get to the Aaron Rodgers, where does he rank the Bay? Because he's one of the greatest. No, 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 that's uh, for another podcast. For definitely for another, look. We got, we got Brady anyway. Speaking of the GOAT, let's talk about him. 45-year-old, old-ass Tom Brady playing in his one millionth playoff game this Sunday at home with the 8-9 and nine Buccaneers taking on, like, the 12-5 and five Dallas Cowboys. Johnny, this is, this is, there's a lot of interesting matchups here. I'm most intrigued, though, by this one. Like, honestly, because... It's a weird game. It's a weird game. This is a Tampa Bay Buccaneers team that beat the Dallas Cowboys, albeit it was in the on opening night when Dak Prescott got injured and Cooper Rush came in. But they did beat them. These two have had very different paths to the playoffs. And in the Bucks' case, they're a losing football team that's hosting a playoff game because they won a terrible division. But people also recognize that the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are a competitive team. And they stay in games too. Like they, they're that's a team that knows how to stay in games. So Johnny, Dallas, Tampa Bay, Monday night playoff football. Joe Buck and Troy Aikman on the call. Who you got? What's going on? Tell me about it. Okay, we're gonna put on the Stephen A. hat. Oh, the no. Dallas Cowboys are a disaster. Waiting to happen. Dak Prescott has been horrible of late. This Cowboys offense is just sputtering. I do not know what is wrong with them. They are a 12-win team, and Mike McCarthy every year seems to be on the hot seat. I think this is the year where he burns up. The 8-9 and nine Tampa Bay Buccaneers will defeat the Dallas Cowboys by four points. Let's go 27, 23. And the eight and nine Buccaneers will move on. This team you mentioned is a competitive football team. I don't know how the hell they won only eight games. That division is awful. They should have steamrolled it. But they have started to win more of late. They have gotten their shit together more of late. They won and got in. So it is time for them to show behind Tom Brady, the GOAT, that Football is football no matter what year it is, no matter how old he is, Tom Brady knows how to win in the playoffs. Every rational bone in my body is telling me Cowboys because even if Dak Prescott doesn't show up, we know 100% that running game will behind both Tony Pollard and Ezekiel Elliott. That yes. defense, I think, is good enough to give Tom Brady fits because he's going to get rushed a lot in this game. and He's got probably going to be on his butt a lot in this game. Low scoring game, definitely, but it's this weird thing of I feel like every time I ever pick against Tom Brady, the dude just finds a way to win. Um, and uh, the the one thing I will say that that does also kind of go against that though is you do you remember the last time Tom Brady lost in the playoffs or in sorry in the wild card round of the playoffs. Oh, my God. He spent every year of his career winning the AFC East, so no. 
it was it was it was actually 2019 after the 2019 it was 2019 season his last game as a New England Patriot I'm just saying there are a lot of rumors an innuendo that the Las Vegas Raiders are very much interested in acquiring the services of Juan Thomas Edward Brady it would not it would it hard for him, maybe Oh well, Derek Carr's gone. He 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 said his goodbye message on Twitter today. Like, well, I mean, I mean, Carr for Brady swap. I don't, I don't think it would be a swap. I I think okay, I understand. Like de- like it, because Derek Carr has like what five six years of good quarterback play ahead of him. Tom Brady, you know, older guy. At the same time, from the Raiders <laughs> or from the Bucks, and I'm and I have to like trade away Tom Brady. I'm like. And give me some picks here too. Like I'm not just taking Derek Carr. This is, this is the goat. I'm not giving away the goat for nothing. Um, of course, but, of course. But that's the basis of the trade. That's that's yeah. the foundation. Well, yeah. Well, anyway, but we'll, we'll, it's a thing for another day. I'm gonna go fourth quarter, a minute fifty four remaining. Brady has the ball at his own fifteen yard line. Marches down the field to put the Bucks in position for a game-winning field goal. Bada bing, bada boom. Ryan Suckup, mystery relevant from 2009, splits it through the upright. One, two, three. Bye bye Dallas. And then Stephen A is gonna wear a cowboy hat on first. Hey, go. How about them Cowboys? And Michael, how about him, Michael Irvin? Well, Michael Irvin. I love how they gave him the Monday spot. Well, actually, no, they're going to have to give him the Tuesday spot now because his game is on a Monday, and he's just going to have yep. to sit there and take it from Stephen. <laughs> it's going to be so funny. Um, But, yeah, guys, that was every single playoff game from this weekend coming up, but that's not it. I just want to give a quick plug. The Saturday 8-15 game between the Los Angeles Chargers and the Jacksonville Jaguars. I will be live streaming right here on YouTube.com forward slash Real Take Sports. Also, going to be doing the same stream for the New York Giants taking on the Minnesota Vikings. Johnny G, if you're available at halftime, I might give you a call to, to go over how great or bad the Giants are doing. Um, we'll see. We'll see. Um, we'll and, and yes, Monday night, 8-15, Dallas, Tampa Bay. I'll be on here too. YouTube.com forward slash real take sports. For those of you who want me to stream the Ravens and the Bengals, go screw yourselves. I'm not going to put that on, on, on a live stream. I, I, I want to try to enjoy that game as much as I possibly can. Um, but yeah, that's it. Uh, Johnny, it's been a while since you've graced us with your presence. Do you have anything you want to say? Anything you want to plug? Anything you want to share with the wonderful people out there in the YouTube verse? Uh, nothing much. Just check out my power rankings on the, the blog whenever Omer's ready to put them on up. I, I write them every week. Coming soon, I think is gonna. I'm gonna start doing a weekly MVP tracker. I got that in the works, so I'm gonna keep an eye out for those as well. Other than that, finishing up school. Just uh, my last semester going on, getting started on bar prep. So we're working hard over here. Yeah, we got, we got, we, 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 I, I would call you legal eagle, but I'm not trying to get sued by that dude. Um, but, but, uh, we, uh, we could do like a distinctively different one, like legal egal. I don't know. Well, we'll figure it out. We'll think about it. We'll think about it. Um, yep. Uh, guys, you can go follow Johnny on Twitter at J O N underscore Gonzalez five, J O N underscore Gonzalez five. Be sure to follow us at Real Take Sports. If you're a wrestling fan, be sure to go out and check out youtube.com forward slash Real Take Wrestling for all your wrestling related needs. We're covered on the AEW buying Vince WWE news. That's going to be interesting to follow. Um, but yeah, NFL playoffs. Let me know what you guys think. Where do we get it right? Where do we get it wrong? Let us know in the comment section below. Hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And until next time, be happy, be healthy, and as always, keep it real. <laughs>